you're thinking it's time to leave on vacation and you're trying to decide should I pack that camera or should I carry my camera and as an avid amateur there's only one answer absolutely carry your camera but what about all those snapshots you know the ones you took last year on vacation and they're just laying in the drawer right where you left them you know 365 days ago you never looked at them again so is it really worth the effort and yes it really is because you too can take good snapshots and you can turn them into photos that has something unforgettable and today I'm going to show you how to do that there are only three things you need to consider with your snapshots and what to do and the first is your subject matter you need to know the guidelines on subject matter first thing is you can't take a picture of the Rocky Mountains unless you go there you gotta get up off your and go there you got to go there you gotta be there you gotta spend the time and you gotta be willing to spend the resources to go on that vacation now I know that sounds obvious but Americans are notorious for not taking a vacation you know that two week three week four week vacation you get you stay home and you work it and you put it in the bank no you, once in a while you gotta get up and go the second thing in, on subject matter is <clears throat> you can't take a picture of the Statue of Liberty if your family's standing in front of it you just can't do that you know you have gotta take a picture of your family in front of the Statue of Liberty and then you got to move them aside and then take a picture of Lady Liberty all by herself. See, that's how you deal with subject matter. You know, family is important, but so is taking a photo that will have meaningful results in the future for you. You know, if you want to shoot the family with the statue, then take a picture of them interacting with the statue you know pointing and say wow mom look how tall it is you know this sort of thing interacting with the scene not standing in front of it in a straight line like little soldiers the bottom line here though folks is to take a lot of pictures you know with digital they're free and so there's no excuse for not taking that shot failing to take that shot is not a valid excuse for missing the picture so second thing is light you've got to uh, shoot with the proper light don't shoot directly into the sun sun is your worst enemy when taking a quality picture especially of people you get all those dark funny shadows you know shade or a cloud can be your best friend when taking a picture if you have to shoot in the sun you know take that camera and and lower it down so that the camera is shooting below the horizon if you possibly can and the way to do that is is to elevate yourself move up move up now, you know your camera is like your eye if you look at the Statue of Liberty at 9 a.m. in the morning and you're standing on the west side when you look up at Lady Liberty the Sun is going to blind you well that's the same way with your camera you point it at the Lady Liberty with the Sun behind it and it's going to blind the camera you're not going to get a good picture okay that's subject matter and that's light the last thing we need to address is composition and composition is what makes the picture pleasing to your eye and more importantly stimulates your mind now there's all kinds of rules about composition there's a rule of thirds there's the rule that you never put the horizon on the center line you know you always put it either high or you put it low depending on whether you got nice clouds or whether you got something in the foreground that you want to shoot and there's all kinds of other rules like that and uh, you can read about those elsewhere we're not going to talk about that today you know you're not on a professional photo shoot you know you're an amateur on vacation so just take those pictures snap away keep it simple 
Now, this, there's a second part to composition I think is even more important. And that is personal perspective. And how you can take that unruly snapshot and make it a photo that you'll want to look at not only when you get home and share it with your friends, but for years to come. Last month we took a vacation to uh, Santa Fe. We stopped at uh, Tucumcari, New Mexico, you know, the famous Route 66 place on the way. And we took a lot of snapshots. And, and what I want to do today is to show you how I took those snapshots and turned them in to what my mind saw. Not what the camera saw, but what my mind saw. And therefore they'll become pictures that I wanted to enjoy for years to come. So, let's take a look and see what I did with my snapshots. This is Tucumcari, New Mexico, the famous Route 66 place. And this is one of the old motels. Not exactly the Holiday Inn Express. The picture is just a snapshot. Look at the building on the left, the white building. You have no idea what that is. Way too much foreground. And it doesn't display what I wanted to display. Now this is it crop in tight, add a little age, a little contrast, desaturate, and it looks like the old motel that my mind pictured when we were there. Totally different picture now. Here's the two side by side. One's a snapshot on the left, the other's a picture that I'll probably want to put in my album. Another shot in two compare. Again, way too much. Nice snapshot, but not really a picture. We need to make some changes here. It needs to be cropped in, especially from the left. Too much going on. Crop it in, a little contrast, a little darkening. And now we have an aged picture that portrays what I saw as we stood there. In the middle of the street, by the way, a four lane highway, not a car in sight. Unbelievable. But again, the one on the right is a picture that'll go into my album, not just a snapshot. Here's another picture in Tucumcari, a nice snapshot, but so flat, no pizzazz to this picture at all. A nice mural, but it needed more. It needs a whole lot more to make it a photograph. Ah, lots of contrast, darken it a little bit zoom in get rid of all the distractions now we have a picture that pops and we're almost there need just a little more ah add one of those old timey frames now we've got a photograph again this will go in my album we're in santa fe now and steer heads were very popular they were everywhere but I can't crop in here tight. There's so much going on in the background though you can't see the steer head. I can't crop in because of the horns. But we can make some changes here. Change it to sepia, darken so the background tends to disappear and the steer's head just pops out. More like what we want to see. This is downtown Old Town Santa Fe, a neat building, but again, a typical snapshot. Not what impressed me about the building. It's all about the balcony and the doors and the color there. Crop in real tight. Add some contrast, darken it, add a frame. Now we've got a picture that puts a memory into my mind, something I'm going to enjoy for years to come. Do you see the difference between a snapshot and a photograph, a picture that says something, that tells a story? That's what this is all about. This is in the Cathedral Gardens, a beautiful statue in bronze, I believe. A really neat statue. This is a typical. I saw many, many people come by and take this very picture, but it gets lost. What impressed me was the hog. Hey, I live in Arkansas. You know, Razorbacks, hogs, but 
this doesn't quite do it. Need to crop in real tight here. Change it to black and white. Add a lot of contrast. Now we got a real razorback. The difference between a snapshot and a photograph. Here we're inside the cathedral. No light, no uh, flash can be used. Very poor picture. Uh, all blurry, out of focus. Terrible, terrible. Not worthy to keep. Or was it? I cropped in real tight, added a lot of blur, up the vibrancy, and I got one of those ooh yeah, holy holy pictures. Something that, eh, it's kind of fun. We're in Taos, New Mexico now. 2,000 year old Pueblo. See the lady on the left in the red? I don't feel sorry for her. She's a Native American. She works there. She's a graduate from Princeton and she's sending her daughter to get a master's at Georgetown. They're doing just fine. But the picture doesn't jump out. It's just a f snapshot. I needed a lot more. So here I cropped in real tight, added a lot of vibrancy, added a lot of contrast. Now that blue door, the dirt and the rocks and the rubble, they just pop out. This makes a really neat picture. A little grainy, but that adds to the age of the picture. As you can see, the one on the right is more than just a snapshot. It's a photograph that tells a story. It tells in my mind what I saw when I was there in Taos. Here we're in the uh, art district of Santa Fe, a beautiful statue. I sat there for about a half hour and looked at this statue and no less than 10, 12 people walked by and took this very picture, which really, other than context, means absolutely nothing. So I let my feet zoom in. I got within about 12 to 18 inches and I took a picture of the Indian's head. Now here we've, we're starting to get something, but it's still not quite there. We need just a little more and I think I found a way to do it. I cropped in a little tighter, made it black and white, up the contrast, darkened the picture. Now we have all the anger and the wrath that's in that Indian's faces that the artist wanted us to see. This is a photograph. Which picture do you want in your album? This is typical of the adobe dwellings in Old Town Santa Fe. Block after block of houses, the windows look just like this. And as I walked by, I wanted to get a picture. But walking by there, there was absolutely no light at all on it. And talk about flat meaningless. Walking back to my car after we visited the center though the sun was on the on the window. Now we're starting to get something here but it's not quite yet there. It needs something more. Contrast, add a little saturation, vibrancy and now I've got a picture uh, that it tells me a story about how the adobe houses looked. It's a little blown out in the upper part of the picture but still it was a great shot. Here you can see the three together. You know, folks, I don't have Lightroom. I don't have Photoshop. I do have Corel Paint Shop Pro. But uh, these are things that you can do with those free and easy to use programs like uh, Picasso. So be sure to take uh, your snapshots and uh, convert them to photographs. Uh, photographs that you'll enjoy for years to come. Uh, I've included in the panel below information on uh, discussing composition for beginners. I think you'll enjoy it, so be sure to watch that. And remember, subscribe and keep that shutter clicking.